Hi everyone, Kyle back here with another set of tutorials for Godot. I'm going to introduce this in the first video here, but I wanted to just preface everything with there was some interesting editing problems with this, um, but it should still be really useful for everyone who needs to use this. Thanks. Hey everyone, Kyle here back with another tutorial for Godot. Today we're going to be talking a bit about cutscenes. I wanted to show people about cutscenes because there seems to be a lot of sort of uh, desire for them, but people don't really have a good idea of how to go about actually creating them in a way that is clean and makes sense. So I thought I would go ahead and uh, do that. Uh, as you can see here, I've got a tile map. That's all it is. I've got uh, some tiles in it. It's just some sort of weird driving service that I made um, because we're going to be making a little race car game. And I'm going to go over a bunch of different tricks here. I don't really have anything super planned out, though. Um, I'm just going to wing it a bit and show you some of, the, some of the things I've come up with in my years of using this amazing game engine. And hopefully they'll be useful to you in the future. So I'm just going to make this. This is not really an important scene. It's just a matter of getting something with collision and getting it with, uh, you know, getting some stuff on there that looks good for us. Nothing, nothing special. It's not really the part of it that matters to us. I'm going to go ahead and instance my player and I'm going to show you what the player looks like. Um, player you can see it's this little car and I've used kids can codes code again to um, set a bunch of things specifically in this resource and I'll go over this in a bit but this resource follows more or less what he did um, the difference is I export mine and that makes it so that when I have a controller like this I can set these values and they'll act differently based on which one is active at the current time. The reason I do that actually for this particular game is because I'm going to be able to upgrade this over time to very specific things. That was plane, this is car, uh, eventually I'll have boat, and they all have different values for all this stuff. This stuff, some of it doesn't make sense, so for like planes, um, you know, slip speed doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I just make it a really high value because planes don't slip that much, but then again, they have a lot more drag than they do friction. So that is the dominant force there. They also have much bigger engines and so on and so forth. So uh, that's all that does. And then here I'm basically doing sort of exactly um, what uh, is done in his video, and I will include a card for that up above here, so you can go ahead and check out that awesome tutorial. But uh, this is all literally more or less exactly from his stuff, um, with some of the things being vehicle mode, that's unique. Um, nothing else here really stands out to me as being unique. The only other thing that we have to do is we have to make our own physics function because this is in a resource and they don't do physics. Um, so we make our own, we get the velocity off the actor and store it in our own and then we modify that and then before we're done we set the current velocity back just like we took it off and I'm returning this turn value and that's just so I don't have to have the uh, check to see if uh, input has occurred in two different places so it's not really that complicated. Now, in one of my previous uh, little tutorials, I showed you a Frenchman with a baguette, and I showed you how to use a, um, uh, what I said, uh, an animation tree done right. Uh, hyperbole aside, um, it turns out it's even easier than I made it, and I'll, I'll tell you, trust me, this is extremely relevant to cutscenes, so I want to go into it. Uh, if we go look at the actual player, um, you 
can see our sprite it has eight different um, states or eight different um, sprites sort of for it they're for idle uh, idle in this case means it's either going or it's stopped it just means it's basically looking straight ahead and then it's got turning right turning left and so for um, that's three and three because it can go into plane form so what are the other ones? The other ones are turning into a plane and obviously the reverse of that coming out of a plane. So if we look at the animation player, we've got all those become car, become plane, and then idle car, idle plane. These are all somewhat important to name in a logical fashion like this. So left car, left plane, right car, right plane. Um, because later it will well, it should be pretty obvious later once we get into the animation tree, which I'm about to show you. Um, the only other things that are really of note here are this camera. I'm going to be changing this toward the, uh, probably toward the end of this, but you can see um, it's just a normal camera. I'm zoomed in a little bit because I didn't change any of the uh, scaling settings. I've got car exhaust and plane exhaust. The only difference is this one has two. Um, and no velocity this one has just one point so that's really it's not that interesting um, these just switch on and off now for my tree this is where some cool stuff comes in that I uh, kind of discovered recently so I started off in idle car in other words car facing forward I've got my turning done because that's all really cars do is left and right there's no um, accelerating that uh, looks different so the car doesn't change shape when it accelerates unless uh, you want to make one like the DeLorean and it's going so fast um, or for that matter if it's going backwards or braking it doesn't really change look or feel so it only matters left and right so what I went ahead and did was I made a blend space 1D and you can do that just by going here, blend space 1D. And when you do that, you'll get this here. Um, obviously, it won't say blend car turn. But for things like this, what I've figured out is when you go into it, you can put actually a number of animations in this. And the reason that's relevant is, so for example, here, I've got left car and here, right car. That's referring to turning left or turning right. What I could do is take my left car and move it to 50%. You can see the value right there. That's what it's on. And I could take my right car and why is it not moving? There we go. Move it also to 50% right there. And then I could have uh, a more extreme turn and have the more extreme turn be something where like you see it start to burn rubber or peel out or something like that. You know, something really bizarre and interesting. And then um, if I set it to 50%, it will do just a normal turn. And if I set it to the extreme full, you know, 100% or one, it'll do a sharper turn. I didn't do that for this because uh, the thing's being controlled mostly by the physics. Um, I, I didn't really feel like I needed to add too much. It was just a matter of tweaking what the physics looked like. And let's go back to the root. Um, as you can see here, I've got my trick with is turning. The uh, not using the uh, travel mode, but using turning instead. Here I do have is idle, which is somewhat, you know, basically the same idea. I swap those internally. Um, here though, when we become a plane, this one, it's got is plane for the advanced condition. Here it actually does auto advance at end. So it runs through is plane. It looks to see where else it can go and it notices, oh, here's the only place it can go at the end of that, and then it goes to idle plane, so that it just sticks in this mode. Now, the cool thing is, if I look at, 
this uh, right here, I have the same property that I had in the blend car turn. This is the blend plane turn. I have the exact same property as turning. And for the way back, I have it as idle as well, the exact same one. So the idea is once you've gone to plane, those booleans take on a slightly, well, it's basically the same meaning, but it's slightly different in the sense that it's a plane now doing the turning. But all my logic is based on the same thing. There's no you know, difference with respect to that. Um, and then become car is you know, exactly the same as this here, more or less. We have is car, so that's the one that um, initiates it, uh, as opposed to is plane. And then, uh, you know, we run become car, and then here we auto advance from there to that at end. Um, and just to show that this is exactly the same, this is just left plane and uh, right plane. I probably wouldn't do the trick with multiple animations here, uh, simply because planes don't turn sharply at all, as it turns out or as it doesn't turn out, as it were. Um, okay, so let's go look at our player. This is where, so aside from the fact that I've made it super clean here, it's a nice looking graph if I do say so. Uh, looks like a spaceship. Um, but with the is turning and is idle, I'm pretty proud of the fact that I realized that they completely overlap. I don't have to have individual properties. Now, if you remember my last, uh, the animation tree is done right, I said you need setters and getters for every single property that you make. So that would be in this case, is turning, is idle, is plane, and is car. That's not the case, as it turns out. Um, this The approach that I'm going to start advocating for now is a little bit more work in terms of just keeping things straight. It makes one function that's a little bit bigger than I normally like to. I don't, I don't like to have them more than like 20 lines usually or or you know somewhere around there. Um, it's actually not that big. This is the the function uh, but it is somewhat complicated in what it does and there's a there's a reason for it but basically this function is the only thing I have that actually deals with the properties in the animation tree. It also deals with a bunch of other properties, and uh, I'll get into that in a minute. Here's the important thing that I have. I've got a car controller and a plane controller and my current controller. These controllers are these resources that I defined earlier, so with all this stuff. So that means if we come back, I can substitute in a controller that does whatever I tell it to instead of something that looks, you know, sort of like this. So in other words, I can inherit from vehicle controller, make a new one. All it has to do is do handle physics and has to return whether or not it's turning. All this other stuff, completely irrelevant. It doesn't have to do it. It can do it if it needs to, but in general, it wouldn't have to. And I'll get into why that's relevant in a little bit. So I can swap my controllers. That's super important to remember for cutscenes. Be able to swap out how you handle physics and how you handle control over your car or your character, whatever it happens to be. Char, as some people say. Um, so I call my set property function. That's all it's called. And I say is car true. Um, I have, this is my own logic, you can do this however you want, these are the properties here. I had this before overriding set, um, which is a thing you can do, but it occurred to me that it gets called with a, a number of um, things that uh, just it really shouldn't be called with, so, you know, position and, and things that just exist generally on the player, rotation, etc. And if you don't have to override it, you probably shouldn't. It's it's sort of an internal function anyway. Um, so 
I just do some checking to see if it's with is. If it starts with is, I go into parameters, conditions, and if you remember, we can go back here and actually look and see these are parameters, conditions. So you see parameters, conditions is car. Notice I have the exact same name as the actual property for my property locally. And that's what I'm setting here as well. So it goes parameters, conditions, is car, if we're looking at this part, line 25 here, and then value, true, so it's in car form. Now that's just setting this. When I uh, actually, I'm going to do some logic, so I say basically I switch my controller to the car controller for the time being. Then I turn the plane exhaust emitting off and the car exhaust emitting on, or true and false, obviously. Um, similarly, I have uh, the exact same logic for blend position, and as you can see, I've got floats here for my blend car turn, and you'll notice it's the exact same name as what shows up down here. And the reason for that is if you look under your different blend positions, you've got parameters and then the name of the property, or rather the name of the state in your state machine, and then blend position. So to facilitate that, I just pass in blend underscore car underscore turn in this case, and underscore plane underscore turn in this case. Interesting thing about that is we see we're doing it in a physics process here. You're setting the same value, and the reason for that is simply because when it goes into plane form or goes back into car form, both of them should be synchronized simply because if it switches while it's mid plane or <coughs> while it's flying or while it's in car form, um, it will go back to the correct turn, whatever it was doing, you know, before it switched, essentially. And then I have is turning and is idle. These are just the opposites. I could probably just do uh, the opposite of is turning, but whatever. And then I'm just setting the current velocity um, as a move and slide, or rather I'm doing move and slide with the current velocity. That of course is set in handle physics. Okay, so this is a bunch of stuff. Join me next time where I discuss some intricate camera movements and how to make a convincing cutscene camera.